Hey everybody, today is Monday, October 9th, 2023, and this video brings us into my house. And the reason why we're in my house today is because today I'm going to be showing you guys something I've been wanting to show you for some time now. We're going to be taking a look at my, my collection, my library, my cinematic media library. For those of you who have been following, following me for some time now, you know that I do occasionally go out and thrift, and when I do thrift... I'm usually on the hunt for DVDs, Blu-rays, VHS, Laserdisc, 4K, things like that. Even more weird and obscure formats with movies, documentaries, TV shows on them. I'm a big fan of collecting cinematic media. And today, we're going to be taking a look at my cinematic media library, or my movie library, or just my collection, whatever you want to call this. Today, we're going to be diving into where I actually store everything I pick up on my my thrifting adventures. There is a lot to go through. We're going to be discussing how I built all of this, how I set all this up, how I display everything, how I organize everything. Again, there's a lot to go through, but today we're going to go through it all. So honestly, I'm not really even sure where to start with the library, but I guess we'll talk about how I, I built this. So this is the basement of my house. I have waterproofed the entire thing. You can see there's kind of like a a bump right there. That's because before I decided to build the library, I had a whole French drain put into the entire library as to um, to prevent water from getting down here. Not that we ever had a lot of water in the basement, but every now and then, if we got a bad rainstorm or a bad snowstorm or a bad snowstorm and then a bad rainstorm on top of it, which does happen occasionally here in, here in Pennsylvania, you would get a little bit of water down here, some puddles trickling in here and there, and I wanted to prevent that, so we have the whole entire basement waterproofed, French drain put in, waterproofing on the walls, etc., and um, knock, on, knock on wood ever since, we have never had an issue with water down here in the library. So we had all of that done down here before I started building everything, and then I started building all these shelves right here. So all the wooden shelves you see along the walls, these were all hand-built by me. They're built in sections, and they essentially just hold each other up. These aren't nailed to the wall. These aren't supported into the wall or anything like that. I did not do some kind of framing work around the walls. I just simply put the shelves up and they all hold each other up by, by, by being secured to, uh, to one another. So all of these shelves right here, all of these I built myself. It did take a little while. Wasn't the, uh, the easiest thing to do, but it wasn't difficult either. Just some measurements, some cutting, some backing put on to prevent the uh, the wood from from bowing. But all of this I built myself. It took a little while, but in my opinion, was completely worth it because I could build these shelves to be custom sizes. They could fit exactly the dimensions of the room. They could fit the exact width, the exact height. They were perfect for um for the library. library. I always say to people who want to, uh, to put shelving up. I always say you should build your own shelves. It's not that expensive. It's not that difficult. Again, some measuring, some cutting, some nails, some screws. It's pretty simple, and you can build shelves to the exact dimension you have to work with. So I always, I always recommend building your own shelves. But as you can see, some of this stuff was not, was not hand-built. I mean, I, I hand-put together these Ikea shelves, but obviously these were these were store-bought. The display cases were store-bought. These shelves here were bought off of Amazon, but all the shelves surrounding the entire, the entire library, all of these were built by me. I've had this library now for, I guess, 10 years, and over those years, I have changed the layout many times. When I first built the library, I had my TVs over here. My couch was, was about right here, so this was kind of my my TV nook, if you will. But then I eventually changed that and had these shelves running long ways down the entire length of the the library, which made for these disgusting dark hallways. It was not a it was not a good look. I was not a big fan of that layout, even though I did have that layout for a couple of years. And then about two years ago, I finally settled on what I think is the perfect layout for the library. The layout I currently have now. I cannot even begin to imagine setting up this library in a different way. I think the shelves and everything are perfect where they are. The the rows are not too long. They're all well lit. Everything about this setup just seems perfect in my opinion. I, I really enjoy the 
the width between each shelf. You can easily walk through them. It's not too cramped like the old setup was. Definitely narrow, tiny little hallways in the previous setup. This is much more open, much more roomy. When you first walk in, there's a sort of big area right here. And then you come around the corner and this is where my TV nook is. This is where I watch all my movies on my my 4K TV mounted to the the wall over there. Some people say this is too high, but it's I, I assure you, it is not too high. It might look that way in videos, but when you're sitting here on the couch, it is the perfect angle to watch movies on my, again, my 4K TV mounted to the wall that I have my 720 CRT TV here with HDMI inputs. This is a high definition 720 HDMI TV right here. It's actually pretty fantastic for watching VHS and Laserdiscs on. This thing weighs 475,000 pounds. Do not know how I will ever move this out of the library. It might be staying here in the future. This might be this might be a relic forever trapped down here in the library. I don't know if I could ever actually move this again. It weighs so much, but it's a fantastic, amazing TV. So I love the I love the nook over here. I like the fact that it's actually hidden. So when you first walk in to the library, you don't just see a TV and stuff like that or a couch. You just see the movies immediately when you first walk in. Then when you come around the corner, you see my display cases and then you see my TV nook area, which is sort of split off from the rest of the library with this Ikea shelf right here. So I like the idea of having my TVs over sort of in this little nook area. It just makes sense to me. So again, this, in my opinion, is the perfect setup for this library. I don't even know how I would begin to rearrange this differently. It is perfect. It is fantastic. It took me eight years to figure this out, but now that I have figured it, figured it out, I love this setup. I guess while we're over in the TV nook area, we might as well discuss what's over here. So again, I do have my 4K TV mounted to the wall. It actually hides this little sort of jet out area right here that on the first floor is the bottom of a closet, but I think the TV hides that quite nicely. I used to have a 4K 3D TV down here that unfortunately that TV died. So now I just have a standard 4K TV since they no longer make 3D TVs, maybe somewhere down the line, I'll, I'll find one at a um, pawn shop or a thrift store and I'll replace this. But for now, just a standard 4K TV. Again, my 720 HD CRT TV. I love this thing. It's a beast, but it's amazing. And then I have all my different players down here and there's a lot to go through. So we have the dedicated video CD player. This is my VCR DVD combo with HDMI outputs, which is why VHS Looks so awesome on this TV right there. I have my 4K player. This is a CDI player, not for playing CDI games, but for, but for playing CDI movies. Super Blue player down here, which plays both Blu-ray and HD DVD. I don't really necessarily need that, but what's nice about this is it is region free. So I can play any region Blu-rays on that, which is the main reason why I have it. Then of course I have a VHS rewinder, my SNES Super Nintendo, not for playing Super Nintendo games, but because I have a um, a Super Game Boy hooked up to it. We'll talk about Game Boy games in, um, in a little bit. Also have a GameCube over here. Again, not for playing GameCube games, but because it has a Game Boy Advance adapter hooked onto it. Again, we'll talk about Game Boy games in a little bit. I've got a Video 8 Rewinder, a Beta Rewinder. This is my Laserdisc player right there. And then we go into um, this cabinet over here, which sitting on top of it is my Pac-Man Arcade 1-Up cabinet. I love this thing. Got this for free. A friend of mine was getting rid of this, said, do you want it? I said, heck yes. I love it. Every so often, I just pop it on, play some most mostly Pac-Man. I mean, the other games are fine as well, but I find myself playing Pac-Man over and over again. My son loves coming down here and playing Pac-Man as well. Love having this, uh, this arcade cabinet. That's awesome. Uh, then we have my HD VMD player. Looks like above, oh wait, there's some stuff above that. Um, this is a DVD player, but it's region free. Uh, we have my my Apple, my Apple, what's it, Apple TV? I think that's what that's called right there. I never, I never use that thing. Uh, this is my CBHD player. So for those of you who do not know, HD VMD 
was a competitor, or, or it was supposed to be a competitor, with Blu-ray and HD DVD when they were battling. Never really took off, never really even came out for the most part, but I do have a player for it. CBHD was China's answer to Blu-ray. So basically, um, it's actually more like um, HD DVD. So basically an, an HD DVD, a, chi a Chinese HD DVD, if you will. This thing was really hard to come by, but I, I did get one. Uh, then we have an HD DVD player underneath that. Then we have, I'm trying to remember what all this stuff is. Um, oh, this is a D little dusty. This is a DVD player with DivX, but not, not the DivX um, C coding, the DivX format. It was an old rental format from Circuit City. It actually has a, a phone, phone jack in the back. You had to hook it up to your phone line. And when you rented a movie, you, you bought a, you, you bought a disc and that disc would be kind of like a rental. And it would, when you popped it in, it would call into your account and it would know how long you had to watch that movie. It was a really weird, like really weird, a system of renting movies. And um, you can't actually use those discs anymore because in order to use a DivX disc, it has to call into the the the, the phone line, the um, has to call into your the service to, into your account, and that account doesn't that, that service doesn't exist anymore. So you can't actually watch DivX discs. Although I do have a demo DivX disc that does play, it does not require a um, a phone connection, so you can actually watch that one. But I do have that. Uh, this is a DVD player here, the Toshiba with a um, that, that's new one enhanced. New one was this um, enhancement for DVDs. There were like, like four of them ever made, four titles ever released with um, with a new one enhancements, and the enhancements were really weird. Like you could zoom in and things like that. It was not anything anybody ever wanted, which is why these players never really became a thing. Uh, this is a D VHS player, which is high definition 1080i VHS. That was a thing for a little while. I have some of those. Uh, my Beta VCR, and then my CED player, my capacitance electronic disc player. So as you can see, I have um, many different players, pretty much a player for every single format I own. And I do have a couple other players over there we'll take a look at in a second. But uh, these are the main players that I can hook up to any of these TVs. They're not all hooked up at the moment. I think only my VHS, DVD combo, my 4K, and my Laserdisc are all that are currently hooked up to my TVs. Everything else I just hook up as needed because everything else I don't usually use all that often, but that's the whole setup I have over here. So lots of different players, lots of different things, and I love it. I love being able to watch any format I want on any of these TVs whenever, whenever I want to watch them. Speaking of TVs, I kind of wanted to go for an old, I don't know, sort of, I guess, rental store feel down here, if you will. So I have a multiple TVs, not just these here, though, the, though these are the main TVs I actually watch movies on. But when I'm doing a tour or I have company over or if I'm working in a part of the library where I can't see these TVs, I have TVs in each corner of the library as well. And as you can see, they're all playing the same exact thing. That's because I have an HDMI splitter that allows me to play. It allows me to play one one title in my 4K player that plays on all four TVs. The splitter's actually hidden behind the TV because there's all kinds of wires. It's the one that's lit up right there, lit up all red. It's an HDMI splitter. Splits, I think, eight ways. I could literally hook eight TVs up to that splitter if I wanted to. Right now, I just have four hooked up to it. But who knows? Maybe someday in the future, I'll hook up more TVs. But right now, it's pretty awesome to have all these TVs playing the same exact thing at the same time in the library. It just kind of gives it that sort of old rental store feel. I like it. It just gives it, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting look. And I, I enjoy having, having this sort of thing going on when I have people down here. When I have company over, I love having all the TVs going at one time. I honestly feel like we're going to just be jumping around this entire time. But I don't know, just going to show you guys whatever pops into my head. So above the TV, you may have noticed... There's a pull-down projection screen. And that's because if I really wanted to, I do have projectors. I have a 16 millimeter projector, an 8 millimeter projector, a um, Super 8 projector, and a Dual 8 projector. And the Dual 8 plays both 8 millimeter and Super 8 film reels. So I have a player for all my different film formats. And I don't really 
I don't really die hard collect for film. I do have some in my collection though. Basically, if, if I if I come across something on 16, eight millimeter, Super 8 that uh, hasn't been released outside of that format, I will pick it up and I will add it to my collection. But I will fully admit, I rarely, rarely, rarely ever use those. They're not really fun to set up. They're not fun to really just take care of. They're kind of a pain in the butt to use. If you've ever used a film projector, you know what I mean. They're honestly not very much fun. But if I really wanted to, I could set it up onto the uh, the IKEA shelf here and um, project it onto the screen there. So that's really the last of my um, my players I wanted to show you guys. But I do have film projectors that are just collecting dust. I honestly, I don't, I just don't use them. But since I do collect for, again, 16 millimeter, eight millimeter and super eight, I do have some in my collection. Even though I don't use them, I, I gotta have them. All right, so with that, I guess we'll dive into my movies now. So I, I've gone through multiple different ways of having my movies set up all throughout the years. I used to have my DVDs, VHS, Laserdisc, Blu-ray, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all separate from each other. I used to have a Blu-ray section, a DVD section, and all, all that stuff. It was, it was kind of crazy to have all these different sections. But two years ago, when I purged my library, and by purge, I mean... I got rid of all the movies I knew I was never going to watch again, or I knew I would never actually get around to watching. So the the library you're seeing right now is a is a true representation of who I am, what I'm into, the movies I enjoy. I don't just look at my collection and go and, and go. I, I I have no idea what movie that is. I just bought it because it looked interesting. Now everything down here I love, I enjoy, I want to have in my collection, and most of this I have actually seen. Probably about um, I would say. 90% of what's down here I have actually watched. Not everything, but most of the stuff down here I've watched. So again, about two years ago, I did the purge. I, I got rid of stuff and I, I moved the library library around, rearranged it, reorganized it, and I decided to go by categories. Again, miscellaneous, criterion, action, comedy, things like that. And I just mixed the formats together and actually put them alphabetically, which is something... I had never done before. I used to do A's together, B's together, C's together, but then there'd be A's DVD, A's VHS, A's Blu-ray. It was a huge pain in the butt. Easy to put stuff away. That's why I used to do it that way. To put to put something away, you just put it on the shelf. It was super crazy easy. Now, since they're alphabetical, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt, but uh, I like it better this way. I can find things easier this way. And I honestly like having formats together. Some people, this really bugs the heck out of some people seeing Blu-rays next to DVDs and VHS thrown in, thrown in there as well. But for me, it works because I can actually have stuff together. I can have, if I have like, let's say the first movie on Blu-ray, but I have the second movie on DVD or vice versa or whatever, they're actually together now. I don't have things all separate and in different parts of the library, which used to drive me crazy. Now I think it makes sense. And I, honestly, I don't mind the look of formats mixed together. I think it looks good. So, all right, we got my comedy over here, which is one of my largest sections. I think it's actually my my second largest section of the, uh, of the library. They start here and they actually go, it's kind of weird the way they do it. They don't go straight across the wall. They go down by sections. So they come down this little section right here. Why I did it this way, I don't know. I just kind of feel it... Uh, it works. So they go down and of course across. Then this little section right here where again it's all the way across and didn't down. And then we go on to this section here again, across and across and down. Then over here. And finally over over here. That's my whole entire comedy section. So again, like I said, it's my second largest um, section in the in the library, my first largest section being my documentaries. I have a ton of documentaries. Big fan of History Channel, Discovery Channel, Learning Channel. Well, back when it was the Learning Channel. Uh, big fan of Nat Geo, biography, things like that. So I have a ton of documentaries. And as you can see, there is a lot. They go all the way from, from all the way up there, all the way over here. So definitely the largest section of my library would have to be documentaries. I just have so, so many. Love watching a good documentary, which is why I have a ton of them. We've got um, sort of this weird area right here that you guys may be questioning, what is this? 
these are um, the titles that I will eventually be adding into my collection. What I mean by that is since I have rearranged my entire library, I have everything set up differently now, everything's alphabetical, everything's by category, I do have some multi-feature sets that kind of drive me crazy because some of the sets have things that are not alphabetically, some of the stuff spans different uh, different genres, so I might have a, a multi-feature set that has a comedy, but then has a horror, and then has a documentary in it because it's all by like the same director or something like that, and of course that kind of thing I don't like because I want to have my comedies with my comedies, my dramas with my dramas, my, my, um, my horror with my horror, so... I'm trying to split those sets up and get each and, and try to get each movie individually from those sets so I can put them away properly in my collection. And this is all stuff here I have within sets that I've gradually been trying to split up. So eventually all this stuff here will go in to my collection. Just I have to find a couple more titles, like one or two more titles from the other sets to, to properly put these away. So this is all stuff that's kind of on hold if you will. Stuff that is definitely going into my collection, just not quite, not quite yet. So over here, I have CDs. I do collect CDs as well. And um, these are different. So I actually take all my CDs out of the cases. I know, blasphemy, I would never do this to my DVDs, but I do do it to my, my CDs. I put them in these thin little, thin little cases right here. And the reason why I do that is because honestly, I don't really have a choice. I cannot display my CDs if I did not do that. I just have too many CDs. They take up a ton of space. I had to do it this way. And what you're seeing right now is maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit more than half of my CD collection. I do actually have a ton of more CDs in binders that I still have to go through and take out of those binders and put into these, um, these thin cases right here. So eventually I will get around to doing that. But yeah, this is maybe like half, if not less than half of my CD collection. Eventually, someday, somewhere down the line, I will get around to um, taking all these and um, and actually putting them into sleeves. I have a couple of a couple of cassette tapes down here as well. Don't really um, buy cassette tapes. Most of these are older punk bands from when I was a um, when I was a teenager. Still have a bunch of a bunch of those. And then around the corner here, we have more CDs. These are ones that come in uh, like kind of more standard or not standard cases like. Uh, paper cases or cases with sleeves on them, basically non-standard case releases. So basically um, the titles that I don't want to, like I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to throw away a case like this. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. The, the sleeves I have over there have all the artwork still in them. So if I ever did want to put those back into cases and jewel cases, I could do that. Something like this, I, I, I would just have to throw out. I couldn't do that. So stuff like this, I do keep with their, um, with their original, with their original artwork and their original cases, I do have my music DVDs over here. So these are all DVDs that have to do with music. Like here's a CBGB one, like Cin Cinderella, Rocked, Wired, and Busted, the greatest video hits. So all kinds of interesting things like that. I, I'm a big fan of music, obviously, and have a ton. As you can see, I'm actually running out of space. I have a lot of music DVDs, VHS. Blu-rays. Also, some of the D uh, DVDs are, are within um, these as well. Like, for instance, Adam and his package here. As you can see, it's kind of in a standard jewel case, but this actually comes with a DVD. It's a CD-DVD combo, which is why I still have it over there. So some DVDs, some Blu-rays, I guess, are kind of sort of within those as well, ones that come with a uh, with a CD. Then we have my, my sci-fi over here, which is a pretty decent-looking collection as well. Again, they, they kind of go the same way, where it's across and they, they end right here and then it goes it goes down then continues over here it ends right there i have all my midnight movie releases not every single one but a a good majority of them i'm trying to get every single one of those releases somewhere down the, down the line i'll get every one of those these are all my trauma titles down here i'm a big fan of trauma i will pretty much buy any trauma movie the Troma logo is on it. I'm probably going to buy it for my my collection. So again, all my sci-fi over here, lots of different stuff. Everything from Aliens to Critters to The Fly to Star Trek, Star Wars, Money More from Power Rangers, all kinds of sci-fi over there. Then up here, these are all my VHS clamshells. They're, they're quite large. I really have nowhere else to put these. So I have them alphabetically just starting here, going all the way across. Then from down there, across here, and then from 
there, all the way down there. And I might have one or two. I don't actually, <laughs> next time I get one, it's gonna have to go right right here. But um, again, clamshells, VHS clamshells, and, and some beta clamshells up here as well. They're just, they're large. There's nowhere really else to put them, so they don't fit on the standard shelves. So they, they just go up there. They look pretty nice up there, I, I think, in my opinion. Then we've got um, action over here. Again, across and down. They end up over here. Then we got my Dragon Dynasty. Again, I don't have every single one of these, but I'm trying to get every Dragon Dynasty title as well. I love martial arts films. These are all my stand-up releases, so stand-up comedians. I have plenty of those also. Big fan of stand-up comedy. These are all my, well, I say WWE because probably 99% of this is WWE, WWF titles. But occasionally there are a few things in here that might not actually be WWE or WWF, but I just, I basically, this is my wrestling, my wrestling area. I should probably just change this to wrestling, not WWE. I think when I, when I first, when I first made this sign, I, uh, I only had WWE titles and then eventually I got some things like glow and stuff like that. Titles that weren't necessarily WWE. So maybe someday I'll change this just to, to wrestling. By the way, these are just thin DVD cases. I got some, um, some, what is this? I guess card stock or no poster board, some bright pink poster board. And these are little sticker letters I got and uh, just made my little, my own little signs for my, for my areas there. Then underneath my wrestling are my extreme sports. I love snowboarding and BMX and skateboarding and all that stuff. I have a bunch of those. Then we got my Criterions over here. I am going for an entire, a complete Criterion collection collection. I would love to have every single one. Don't know if that'll ever happen, especially since I'm not actively trying to collect them. What I mean by, by, by that is I'm not going out to Best Buy. I'm not going out to Barnes & Noble and buying these brand new for like 40, 50 bucks a piece. I'm just, I'm just buying these when I come across them for a, a really good price. If I find them for like $10 or less, or maybe like 20, if it's a title I really, really want, I'll pick it up. But this is mostly all stuff I found out in the wild. Occasionally, if they're having a sale at Barnes and Noble, I might pick up one or two titles I really want. But for the most part, all this stuff found out in the wild. So this is my Criterion collection. I have it on this end cap right here. It goes all the way down. And then over onto this end cap as well. So that's my, my Criterion collection. Got my Godzilla Criterion set up there. We have my miscellaneous titles here. So this is all just random stuff that um, didn't really fit anywhere else. Or this is also multi-feature sets that span different genres. So I might have, for instance, the Ed Wood box set. This has all kinds of stuff. It has a documentary. It's got horror titles. It's got sci-fi titles. Doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't go into one genre. So it's over here in miscellaneous. I have just again things like Bear in the Big Blue House. I mean, it's not really a, it's not really a comedy per se. Big Comfy Couch. Again, not really a a comedy. Ghost Rider. It's just weird, interesting, bizarre things. Basically, stuff that unfortunately doesn't really have a home because it spans multiple genres, or because it really doesn't have a genre that it would necessarily fit into. All that stuff is is over here. Down here, these are my Studio Classic releases by 20th Century Fox. I have most of the collection. I think I might be missing one or two of those, trying to get a complete set of those as um, as well. Then we have all my Marvel titles over here. I have most of all the Marvel releases. I think maybe there's a couple random things I'm missing. I mean, I have all the major releases. The stuff I'm missing are just really weird and obscure titles, but I actually have a lot of the weird and obscure stuff. So a lot of this is, most of this I would say is, is probably complete. I do have a ton of uh, of Marvel. Then we have all my fantasy titles down here. So just things like Conan, Fraggle Rock, Game of Thrones, Dungeons and Dragons, Hercules, Lord of the Rings, stuff like that. All my stuff I consider just fantasy titles. Not really sure. Like, I mean, I guess some of that stuff maybe could have been put into sci-fi. I don't know. Just went with fantasy for, for that section there. Then we have my DC comics releases. Again, most of this is, is complete as well. I do have a, a very big DC comics collection. I have most of all the major, well, I do have all the major 
releases, and then even the minor releases, I have a good majority of them as well. So I do have uh, most, most of all the DC stuff over there. Then we have my Disney titles over here. I love collecting for Disney. Up until a certain time point, I will pretty much buy any Disney movie, any Disney TV show. It kind of gets to that whole, like, I, I do, I do, okay, I do have Hannah Montana in my collection. I enjoy Hannah Montana, but it's kind of that time period, like, that's so Raven and stuff like that. I really wasn't all into that whole time period, so I don't really have a lot of that stuff. Um, like, Zack and Cody, things like that I don't have, but I, I do have Hannah Montana because I do, I do, I do enjoy Hannah Montana, but anything, like, past that time period, I will pretty much buy any, like, newer movies I buy as well. I just, I love Disney. So I have a ton of Disney titles. Big, big section of uh, of Disney. Then we go into my animation. Figured I'd put that right next to uh, to Disney. I love cartoons. So I have a ton of these as well. Just love collecting for um, for animation. So this is my entire animation section. Starts over there. These two whole sections here and this all right here. It's all animation. And then next to animation yet is my anime section, which has been growing by leaps and bounds. This is, when I when I tell you guys I've watched probably 90% of my library, this is a good 8% of that 10% I haven't watched yet. I've got to get around to watching more of my anime, but I love collecting it. When I do watch it, I love watching it. I'm a big fan of anime. Everything I've seen thus far, for the most part, I've really enjoyed, so I do love collecting for anime. I do have a lot of anime as well. It spans this whole back area here behind the the TVs. This is all, all my anime. Lots and lots of stuff. And then last but not least is my, maybe my favorite section, my horror section. I specifically put this right next to, right next to my couch and whatnot because I wanted to look at this all the time because I love horror movies. When people ask me what's my all-time favorite genre, I mean, technically, I usually, I usually say documentaries, but people sometimes don't count documentaries as a, um, as a category, as a, as a genre, but I mean, it, it is, and I do, but if they don't accept that answer, I usually go with, okay, horror is my favorite genre of film, and I have a ton of horror as well. Love looking at this section of the library, all my different horror titles here. That's my entire horror collection. So that's pretty much it for all the different sort of genres I have set up. And then I have a couple more things throughout the entire library as well. I just realized somehow I completely forgot to show you guys my drama section, which can be a little controversial. I realize some of this stuff might be considered action, maybe some of this stuff considered comedy, but I do usually tend to put war movies and westerns into my drama section. Also, I feel that dramedies that are more heavy on the drama more so than the comedy should also go into drama as well. Again, I know a little controversial. Not everybody agrees with the titles I choose to put into my drama section, but that's just the thing. It's my drama section. So whether you agree or disagree, it doesn't really matter. These are the titles I, I feel that should go into drama. Also, it's not exactly one of my largest sections either. So again, drama. These are the movies I feel should be, be in drama. But again, I have some other things spread throughout the library as well. For instance, you may have been noticing this, again, Ikea shelf here, which does have movies and whatnot on it. These are basically all my box sets and things that are just way too large to display anywhere else. So I have them displayed here, like my Dexter Complete Series Blu-ray set, the Nakatomi Plaza Die Hard collection, my Seinfeld collection, the only 35 millimeter film print I have in my collection. No, I do not have a 35 millimeter film projector, but I wanted to have this format at least in my collection somehow. This is Scenes from a Mall, the Woody Woody Allen, Bette Midler movie. I have the entire movie on 35 millimeter film. Then we have my Terminator 2 set right there, my 4K set, some Laserdisc sets down here like Star Wars, Nightmare Before Christmas. There's Full House and Home Alone and Marvel's Avengers. This is the um, Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 1 Avengers Assembled like briefcase. That thing's pretty awesome. I do have a whole bunch of different Titanic VHS releases. At this point, I think I have most every release. There might be a couple more here and there from other countries I don't have, but I do have a, um, a pretty extensive Titanic VHS 
collection. Not going for as many as I can get, just going for as many different releases of that movie as I can get. Not that it's my favorite movie. Titanic's a great movie. I love this film, but it's not my favorite. I just have this because, of course, as we all know, Titanic is probably the most prevalent VHS in the world. No matter what thrift store, pawn shop, etc. you go into, yard sale you go to, you're probably going to find a copy of uh, Titanic on VHS. So I love collecting all the different releases of Titanic on VHS. Then we got some Spider-Man 2, my Monkeys complete series set. I do have this little bin here that holds all my different remotes. So yes, all my TVs, all my players, everything, they, they do have remotes. And they're all right here in this, this little bin right there. Then over here, we have all my Disney treasure sets. I'm missing like, I think five sets. And once I get those five sets, I'll have a complete Disney treasure collection. That is one of my big goals in life is to get every single one of these. Like I said, I need like five more. And then my set's complete. Hopefully someday I'll find those. I got King of Queens here. Again, all kinds of interesting things. So even some music over here, like my Smashing Pumpkins, the Aeroplane Flies High box set. So there are some music sets over here. Got things like there's King Kong there and... um the, mu uh, the music behind the magic, which is a bunch of um, CDs. So all kinds of stuff. Not going to go through all of this, but you can see the, all sorts of different box sets. Blu-ray box sets like Casablanca down here, Singing in the Rain, Ben-Hur, The Iron Giants. These here are autographed DVDs and stuff. So throughout my collection, some of the stuff in my collection is autographed. If you go to my website, I do have... Um, I will have the titles list. I'm still in the process of cataloging everything I have down here, but when I do get a title that is autographed, I do write it in my collection uh, on my website as autographed by whomever. But sometimes I have things that I don't necessarily need. For instance, I have all the Scream movies on Blu-ray, which is what you will find in my collection over in the horror section. But Jamie Kennedy did sign Scream in this box set, which is why I have this. I have some like, Masters of Horror sets. I'm not necessarily a big fan of this show. I know I never really got into it, but these are autographed by the directors, so I kept those. And then just other random stuff over here, like um, I have an autograph on the uh, Blob by Danny from uh, from the movie, but again, I have Blob the Criterion, so I don't really need the VHS release. So all this stuff is basically things that, for one reason or another, don't need to be in my collection. I don't necessarily need these releases, but they're autographed, so I keep them. Like the Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie, I have it on Blu-ray, Autographed by James Rawl, but I also have a VHS copy autographed by uh, James and Bootsy and uh, and Mike. So I have I have to have that. Uh, I have some books here that are autographed as well. So just kind of random autographs there. Down here, these are all my Laserdiscs. I used to have a huge Laserdisc collection. Actually, these are my Laserdiscs and CEDs. I have my CEDs uh, mixed in here as well. I had two full shelves full of Laserdiscs and CEDs. It was insane. I sold them all off because um, I did not need them. It was a bunch of stuff I already had on other formats, so I did not need those titles anymore, so I got rid of them. These are all the things, the, the movies I wanted to keep that I only have on CED or that I only have on a Laserdisc. That's why I have all those down there. So again, this whole shelf back here is all just stuff that, uh, like box sets and just things that are just too big to fit on the shelf. I got my Planet of the Apes Caesar bust here, which I I love have the um, the Oswald the Lucky Rabbit ears on him. Some other random stuff. So I think that's pretty much it for my my movies. I think although back here I do have the entire collection of Game Boy Advance videos. These are all the carts they made. Every single one, a complete collection. Which is why I have these framed. Terrible format, awful format. It was um basically just really low quality video on a Game Boy Advance cart. And then you can watch the movie, watch the movies. Yeah, there are full movies on these. You can watch the movies or TV shows on your Game Boy Advance. It's terrible. It looks awful. It's horrible. The frame rate is garbage. The sound is garbage, but they did make them. And I do have an entire collection right there framed. And I guess while we're talking about uh, Game Boy Advance, we might as well quickly talk about my Game Boy collection the only video games i collect for not that i have anything wrong with video games i love playing video games my son has a switch my son has a wii we play those games all the time together but for me personally my all-time favorite video game system is the game boy advance because it plays game boy game boy color 
and Game Boy Advance games. I grew up on Game Boy. Then in my, I guess, 20s, I got really into the Game Boy Advance. So I just, I love collecting for Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. And this is my entire collection right here. So what I did was I got these Ikea shelves, these little bins here, and they just have all my titles put in here. So these are all my, all my titles starting with C that are there, all my titles starting with D that are in here. Doesn't make it necessarily easy for finding titles, but when it comes to Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, there's really no easy way to display those games. It's really, it's really difficult to find a good way to display them. I had them in binders. That really didn't work. I feel like this is the best way I could come up with to uh, display all my games or to store all my games. I'm, I like it. So this is my Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance collection, which again is why I have the SNES with the Super Game Boy and why I have the GameCube with the Game Boy Advance adapter. Not to play Super Nintendo games, not to play GameCube games, but to play Game Boy games. I have my my uh, Game Boy case there. Over here, I have some controllers, like my GameCube controller, different miscellaneous cords, different accessories. My e-reader is over here. So all kinds of interesting things like um, my actual Game Boy uh, Game Boy players there. I have a couple box games as well. I don't usually collect for box games, but I have a couple of them that are in box. I figure whatever, I'll just hold on to those. So that is the only video games I collect for it. Just just Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, which I display back here on these um, on these shelves in the bin. But um, again, I think that's about it for my my physical media. But there are some other things I collect for as well. So I'm sure, as you guys probably noticed in the background, Spice Girls. I am a big fan of collecting Spice Girl memorabilia. I know. Go ahead. Make fun of me. It is what it is. I, I'm a big fan of the Spice Girls. It, it, it is what it is. I don't care. I'm not going to be ashamed of this. I love the Spice Girls. So I do have my Spice World poster, my only full-size poster I have back here on the door. And I have my Spice Girls Spice World Tour poster down there as well. And then I have my Spice Girl collection which is in these display cases right here so i have a ton of the dolls that span the entire top of the the display cases lots of dolls lots of things like a microphone some little mini dolls here play sets all kinds of stuff there's there's posters here as well so lots of um lots of spice girl stuff uh over here this is all my my Spice Girl Media, I got DVDs and VHS, there's buttons up there and cassette tapes, all my Spice Girl CDs, Spice Girl Records, so again, all kinds of Spice Girl stuff. There's my Brickhead's Lego set, which I actually have two of, one to have boxed, one to have out and uh, displayed. There's some dolls up there, Spice Girl books, Marm, dolls and keychains and the camera and just all kinds of things related to the Spice Girls. I even got the, the old school Chupa Chup lollipops and some Cadbury chocolate, some, some bubble gum there as well. Get more dolls, more randomness. This, um, this calendar here and this calendar, calendar there, those are from back when I was a, when I was a teenager because Spice Girls, Spice Girls were pretty big when I was a teenager and I, I had those calendars. Those are my original calendars with all my dates and whatnot written in them. Party supplies here, Spice Girl t-shirts, a, a backpack, so lots of uh, lots of Spice Girl stuff in these display cases. Yes, I do. Again, I do collect for Spice Girls. Make fun. I don't care. I love it. And my pride and joy, my Spice... Again, very dusty down here. My Spice Girl bike, which is mounted to the uh, the ceiling. Had a viewer, my viewer uh, Anthony, find this for me. He found it at a Goodwill. That was an awesome find. Spice Girl bike. Did not know what to do with it, so I figured, I don't know, mount it to the ceiling. One of the other major things I collect for is Figment. If you don't know who Figment is, um, then you're maybe not a big Disney fan or a big Disney Parks fan. Figment is basically the mascot for Walt Disney World's Epcot Center. He has been the mascot since like 19, I think, 84. He, um, he is quite prevalent with, uh, with Epcot, and this is my entire... Figment collection. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff. Everything from pins, there are plates, there are puzzles, there are books, there are magnets, there are stickers, there are there are um, statues back there. There's a popcorn bucket. There's all kinds of other statues. All these down here are plush 
figment plush down there. There's salt and pepper shakers and just in so many different figment things. Lots and lots of figment. Although I gotta be honest, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to continue to collect for, for figment. I may or may not. The reason is when I first got into collecting for figment, they would come out with things here or there. Every, every year, maybe like three, four, five at most figment items would get released from Disney. And that would be about it. Maybe a pin, maybe a pair of ears, maybe a, a magnet, something like that occasionally would come out from Disney. Then over the last couple of years, Disney realized a lot of people love Figment. He's a very popular character in the parks. And if you stick his face on something, people are going to buy it. And they've been going crazy with the merchandise, which means it's kind of getting out of hand to collect for Figment. And I don't know if I'm going to have room to continue to collect for him. So I might just, I don't know, I, I may still continue to, to collect, but just be very selective about what I buy. Just kind of buy the coolest, most interesting, unique things. Or maybe I'll just, I don't know, maybe I'll just stop collecting altogether. I haven't completely decided, but it's kind of a shame because I do have a rather massive figment collection that I I do love quite a bit. Even have this uh, print up here as well. So big fan of figment, my favorite Disney character. I love collecting for him. I'm just not entirely sure if I can continue to collect for him or not, just due to the amount of merchandise that Disney has been pumping out over the last amount of, uh, last couple of years. But we'll, we'll see. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. But in the meantime, I do still have my figment collection. I do still love buying, buying figment items and collecting for a figment. He's a pretty awesome character. So yeah, I do have a, um, a very large figment collection. I suppose since we're already going through the display cases, I might as well show you what's in this one over here. So this is all just random box sets. These are handheld players and then just a whole bunch of different formats represented down there. So all just kind of weird, random stuff over here in this uh, this display case. These are all box sets or just releases of movies I have already in my collection, but for whatever reason, I wanted to hold on to these releases as well. Mainly just like limited edition sets or, or hard to find sets or just something about these are, are really awesome. And I had to hold on to them. Things like the Little Mermaid set with the infamous um, cover arts. I, I had to hold on to my big box Silent Night, Deadly Night VHS. These are European releases of Beauty and the Beast and Back to the Future on Blu-ray. My Innkeepers set right here, which is really awesome. One of my all-time favorite movies. Star Wars on, on video CD. Young Frankenstein on Beta. Song of the South. One of the only two ways this movie was ever legitimately released by Disney. The European VHS. And then I have the Japanese Laserdisc down there. This is the original Sleepaway Camp box set with the Red Cross artwork. That is awesome. In the deep, this uh, DVD was recalled. So all kinds of interesting things like that. Just for whatever reason, for one reason or another, I just had to keep all these sets right here. Then we have handheld players, all sorts of things down here, like the, uh, the juke box there, or the, sorry, the, the juice box there. Again, just a whole bunch of just weird, random players like the uh, the movie viewer i got my my psp in there um these are video now players mini dvd players so a whole bunch of just weird random handheld formats i, I could go through all of these individually but uh, there's a lot to go through so all just kind of like weird stuff this is a camcorder that plays uh video eight it actually has um outputs audio video outputs so you can play video eight tapes through that which is pretty pretty awesome and then down here, this is just a representation of every format I own. In fact, since I did um, go through my collection and get rid of stuff, some of my more obscure formats, I actually ended up not really keeping anymore because I didn't, I didn't need any of those titles. They were titles that um, may have been on DVD or, or VHS or, or Blu-ray or something that I did not need the weird obscure format for anymore, but I still wanted to hold on to it. So we have things like Laserdisc back there movie cd and um dvhs or the dvhs right there of of the ring and just all kinds of different stuff vhs blu-ray hd dvd cbhd hd vmd divix and just again the list goes on and on there are multiple different formats down here everything you're seeing is a different format this is all different stuff not a single one of these things you see right here there's no there's no doubles of, of Blu-ray. There's no doubles of DVD. Everything here is 100% a different format 
from each other. So I kind of like, I kind of like just having these on display for whatever reason, just kind of to show people all the different formats that movies were put on. This is pretty much it. There really aren't any more formats. I think there's like maybe one other format. It's a really hard, like Chinese, hard to find Chinese format that was kind of like their sort of, um, their, 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 their CBHD was their, was their answer to Blu-ray. They also did one for DVD and those I cannot find, unfortunately. Other than that, I pretty much have every, every single format. So just wanted to, uh, to display those down here. So that's kind of what's in this little sort of back area here that unfortunately kind of gets, uh, kind of gets neglected, but I have to have all that stuff just on display somewhere. And then the only other real collection I have down here would be my pin collection. So everywhere I go, every time I visit a historical place or go to a roadside attraction or to an event or something like that, if they have a pin for that event, for that store, for that roadside attraction, for that museum, for that historical place, I will always pick up a pin for it and display it here on my little pin section of the, uh, of the library. It is ever growing. As you can see, still have some more room to grow, but this is the only other real thing I necessarily collect for are enamel pins and sometimes, sometimes non-enamel pins, but I do prefer enamel pins from everywhere I have visited. Those are all on display right there. And that's pretty much about it for things I collect, just uh, Spice Girls, Figment, movies, pins, but I do have a lot of decor down here as well. So decor is not something I necessarily collect. It's just stuff I pick up for, I don't know, for filling out the library, for making the library look good, for taking shelves that would otherwise be empty and putting something on them, like all my Laura Dern stuff right here. I do have a, a Jake from Jake and the Neverland Pirates as well, but this is all my Laura Dern stuff. I don't necessarily collect for Laura Dern per se, but I do buy pretty much any Laura Dern action figure or just whatever I can get my hands on to uh, to display. So I don't know. I guess you could say I have a Laura Dern collection, but I'd only say kind of, sort of, because like this, this is not something that would have to stay in my library. If someday I needed this shelf space, I would take this down. I would maybe put this stuff into storage. I don't need a Laura Dern collection, whereas my Spice Girl collection, I need. And for the moment, I need my... Um, my Figment collection, but my Laura Dern collection, I mean, I used to have a collection of Jar Jar, Jar Jar Binks as well, and I ended up getting rid of most of that stuff, sold most of that off, kept just a couple things like the hand puppet and uh, some of the plush, but for the most part, I got rid of that entire collection. So someday, Laura Dern could be the same way. I could possibly someday get rid of this collection, but for now, I have a nice little display of, uh, of Laura Dern stuff. Of course, I have things like Star Wars standees and um, just all kinds of things. These I got from a um, a closing uh, Hollywood video that was going out of business. These really cool five dollar like little marquees. They had all kinds of displays. Like there's Casper, Beverly Hillbillies. I have ornaments hanging from the ceiling. There's things like uh, Aladdin. Got a sign here. Got Epcot pennants. Got a Camp Crystal Lake pennant. Some action figures. There are some Jar Jar Binks action figures up here. So all sorts of just just stuff on display. I will pick this stuff up as I come across it, just knowing that I could fill out the the library, put random things on on display, hang stuff from the ceiling. I love stuff like the Home Alone Three marquee. That's awesome. The crow there and the Aladdin Burger King mobile. That's pretty awesome. There's a Pokeball up here. So all kinds of just again random stuff sort of on display, hanging from the. Uh, the ceiling, some stuff on shelves, my Mushu Funko Pop, my Wally here, and I do have a couple of Funko Pops, like my Splash Mountain, Song of the South Funko Pops, and the Charmander, Jar Jar Bings, Babu Freak. There's my M&Ms, hanging out, watching some, some movies. I do have a lightsaber I built at, uh, at Galaxy's Edge at Walt Disney World. I have my, my Harry Potter wand, it's Bellatrix's wand right there that I got in Universal. So again, random stuff like that. There's Aladdin on his flying carpet. I love picking up things like, like the old display pieces like that. I got some Game Boy ones here. Right down the side, there's a Blu-ray one right here. Another Game Boy one. So I love, again, I love picking up all this random stuff to uh, display. Killer Cross, Matter Space, Cotton Candy Gun. I, of course, have tons of little toys and whatnot on display as well. Love picking these up. 
like I said, not really a collection. I don't collect these things. I'm not actively trying to have a toy collection per se, but I love picking this kind of stuff up because it does fill out the shelves. These shelves would otherwise be empty, but as you can see, they are filled with all kinds of toys and figures and whatnot. Otherwise, they look like this, which isn't much... That's not much fun. I want to fill them with um, with toys and stuff just to uh, to fill it out. But as time goes on, as I buy more DVDs and Blu-rays and whatnot, more movies, these toys will eventually um, find their way into a bin or, or going to Goodwill or being donated or sold or, or something. But uh, So that's why I don't really consider them a collection because I don't necessarily plan on keeping those. It's just decor. It's things that make the library look um, look a little better. Up here, I have all my different badges. From conventions I've been to. Most of these conventions I've been invited out to as a guest. So all kinds of badges on display hanging from the uh, ceiling. I got quite a lot of a lot of these. I have some other little counter displays. Spider-Man Burger King crown up there. So all kinds of just again random stuff just uh, all throughout the uh, the library. I get my posters, all kinds of stickers on those. Got my my Jurassic World little display piece I got from a, uh, I think I got this from a uh, maybe a, a Walmart, if I'm not mistaken. Has some autographs like Mr. T, all kinds of different autographs up here as well. Don't really collect for autographs per se, but I'll I'll get them when I can, either for free or for cheap. Or sometimes people get them for me. Have them on this side as well. Just a few more autographs up here. Some wrestling autographs. Again, some more store display pieces. This was a um, a display that was up in one of my local movie theaters before it closed down. That's pretty awesome. Got some Batman stuff up here, like Joker. There's there's Batman. So again, all kinds of um, just display pieces. I do have some little mini posters along the the ends of my my shelves here, just for some some decor as well. I like the fact that uh, the mini posters fit perfectly on these sides of these these display cases. There's some Rocco and some some Muppets, Friday Night Two, Star Wars down there. All kinds of awesome little mini posters on display. But I think that's pretty much about it. Again, just other weird random store displays like this blockbuster card display. These. Movie Blu-rays are arranged A to Z displays I got from a closing store as well. These, I don't remember. I think I got these from, I don't know. I actually don't remember where I got got these from. One of those those home decor stores. Maybe, um, I honestly, honestly, the more I'm thinking about it, I don't remember where I got these. But just one of those random home decor stores had these. Just thought they were interesting. Put them on display. This is cool. This DVD video sign. This is one of my pride and joys of my collection. This I got from a closing Borders. When Borders went out of business, they had a movie section and they had this giant DVD video sign that was like three stories up on this wall. It was insane. It was crazy high up. And I said, are you getting rid of that? They said, yes. And they said, if you want it, you've got to take it down. So they handed me a knife and like a hammer and a very tall ladder and said, go at it. Had I fallen, I don't know who I could have sued, but it just seemed like crazy. They let me go up like three stories on this crazy high ceiling and rip this thing down. But I did it because I really, really wanted this display. And that is awesome. My DVD video display that has been moved around the library many of times over the years. But that'll be something that's always in the library. No matter how I, I set up the library in the future, this DVD sign will always be displayed somehow, somewhere. I love this thing. I have my Mickey Mouse um, screen here. This is a computer screen, my monitor. This uh, right here is actually, this cardboard cutout was from a um, a box from the from the Disney store. Disney had these these boxes that had Mickey on it. So I, I just didn't want a blank screen. So I, I cut it out, used some double-sided tape and stuck it on here to kind of give the screen an interesting look. But I just love the fact that it's a Mickey Mouse screen, a Mickey Mouse display. That is awesome. So had to uh, display that. Again, some Jar Jar Bings plush. There's uh, Mr. Bear. It's actually Humphrey Bearguard. But uh, if you guys are a big fan of Full House, then you guys would definitely recognize Mr. Bear right there. He was a legitimate, he was a legitimate bear. He wasn't a bear designed for that show. Mr. Bear was Humphrey Bearguard. He was an actual legit toy that um, I have 
I have one of some other random things like a Jeffrey there and some some autographed stuff there and just all get all kinds of random things. You may be wondering what's with the adults only. This is just where you can see back back there. There's a there's a spigot back there. The water meters back there. There's another water thing back there. So just stuff I had to have access to. I couldn't just block this kind of stuff off. Um, actually, this is a water spigot. That's the um, the water meter, and then back there is the main shutoff to the house. So if I want to shut the water off. I, I need to be. I need to have access to that. So I made these little adult only kind of um, signs, and then the curtains almost making it look like you're in an old rental rental um, la, la, re rental store where you would, you know, go back into the adults only section to find the, the mom and dad movies. I, I wanted to have little, little things like, um, like that. But again, I'm thinking I'm running out of things to, to show you guys. There's really not much more up in the ceiling. I do have, I do have uh, Christmas lights. The reason I did that is because these are actually shelves, believe it or not. These, these planks right here are shelves. And a long time ago, I used to actually display movies up in those shelves. I decided not to do that anymore. I did not want to do that. It was a pain to have movies up up there. It was extra storage. It was nice. I mean, if I ever need to go back to doing that, I could, but uh, I don't think I ever will need to put VHS or DVDs or anything up in the rafter shelves again, but those technically are shelves, which is why I had the uh, the lights put up there because I wanted to, um, to be able to see those better. I have an X-Wing here fighting... Fighting a TIE fighter with the uh, Millennium Falcon behind it, fighting as well. There's there's uh, Laura Dern shooting at uh, shooting the TIE fighter as well. So I just I got just all kinds of weird, random stuff. I love I love Vice Admiral Holdo, best character, best Star Wars character ever. So all right, I think that's pretty much about it for the most part. I I do have this horror rug here, looks like an old horror sticker, and I do have um, the night he came home Halloween. Um, little mats down here as well. These little area rugs down here. I have a little Muppet Show like trash can that I put all my change in as I come into the library. Just throw my change in there, and then eventually I take it to the uh, the bank and and cash that in. This is a little display cart or a little a sort of wheeling cart. This I do all kinds of stuff with. I used to use this to put stuff away. I put all my movies I had to put away on here, and then wheel it throughout the library. Now it just holds spare cases that I I occasionally use. So, all right, again, guys, I think that's pretty much about it for the library. I do think I've shown you guys pretty much everything there is to show. I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. That was my entire collection, I do believe. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think you guys have officially seen everything now. Whew, okay, so again, I do think that is pretty much about it for my um, my entire library. I do think you guys have seen most everything. I do have this um, stuck on VHS book on the top of my packing machine. There's a George of the Jungle display piece there that was from a McDonald's Ghostbusters um, poster up there on the ceiling for the for the heck of it. But again, I think that's pretty much about it. So um, like I said, I have had this library now for about 10 years, but all these shelves here by myself, had the whole thing waterproof, painted the, the floors. They unfortunately are starting to chip up a little bit. The paint, I mean, it only lasts so long until you have to repaint it, but um, don't know if I'll ever actually repaint the library. I don't think that's gonna happen, but um, so painted the floors, again, waterproofed, built the shelves, the lights, these major lights right here. I had these installed by an electrician, like electrician, electrician. Then I had uh, these small lights here. These I put in my myself. Those are just uh, run by um, by standard plugs, but I, I installed those. Some Batman back here. So I have done a lot of work to this library over the years. Everything from first building it to just the way I've rearranged it, displayed things, shelves I've bought, shelves I've built. There's been a lot of work done to this library over the last um, 10 or so years. But with that, I want to say the main reason why I want to show this library off, why I wanted to do this video, is because the library is officially moving. This week, I'm going to start packing all this stuff up, and it's going to start going down to Florida. For those of you who maybe are new to this channel, I have mentioned many times, I am moving to Florida at the beginning of next year, and the library has to go 
with that move. Obviously, all these movies are coming with me and I've got to start moving these down now. If I don't start moving everything down now, it'll never happen. These there, there's, there's so much stuff to move. I've really got to start working on this now to get it done as quickly as possible. So tonight, I'm probably going to start packing this stuff up. So I really wanted to document this, show this to you guys, show you what the library looks like right now. The last time it'll probably ever look like this, which is a shame because it took me so long to get this library built, set up, and in the perfect, in my opinion, perfect, just per perfect way of having the perfect arrangement, if you will, the, the perfect way of having this library look. It took me many years to figure this setup out and to figure out how I wanted to, to make this look. And now that I have it perfect and it looks amazing and I love everything about this library, I am about to start packing it all, all up and moving it down to Florida. But don't worry, because once I do move down there, I will be building a library in Florida as well. Probably similar to the setup you see now. I'm, I'm probably going to try to keep it somewhat similar. It's not going to be exact because the space I have to, to build in is actually a little bit larger, which is nice. But um, ceilings will probably be taller and um, it's just going to be a little bit different, but also a little bit the same, if you will. Probably going to keep something similar to what you're seeing now, but wanted to, do, wanted to do this video, document my library, the library I've had for the last 10 or so years, the library I've come to love, the library I literally spend every, at least a little bit of every single day in over the last 10 plus years. Every day I come down here, whether it's to do work on my computer, whether it's to watch a movie, whether it's to put stuff away, whether it's to just hang out for whatever reason, I always have to come down here and just hang out in the library, at least for a little while every day. But sadly, as of tonight, this library is no longer going to look like this. I'm going to start packing stuff up, putting things into boxes. And this weekend, I'm going to start taking it down to Florida. It's going to take a long time to get all of this down to Florida. Not going to happen in one trip. It's going to happen in many, many, many trips. But the start of the move is, is happening this weekend, which is kind of uh, sad. But again, I wanted to just document the library, not only for you guys to show you guys what my library and my collection looks like, but also to document it for me so that years later, I can come back, watch this video and remember what my collection, what my library used to look like back when I lived in Pennsylvania. I'm probably going to go for a somewhat similar setup in, in Florida, but it won't be, it won't be exactly the same. So just wanted to, like I said, document this so I could years later look back at my, at my library and remember what it once was, what it once looked like, and just remember all the fun times I had down here and how happy walking around my library would make me. I'm sure for those of you out there who also collect whatever it is you may collect, whether it's movies or video games or toys or whatever, if you're having a bad day or things aren't things aren't going right or you're tired or just some, for some reason you're just not having a great day just walking amongst your collection can definitely bring a smile to your face and i'm sure again for those of you who do collect you know what i'm talking about if i am having a bad day i will just come down here i'll turn the lights on and i'll just walk around my collection i'll look at my movies I'll remember, oh, I, I remember like buying that at a at a random thrift store I went into, or oh, that came from a flea market. I, I remember that day. That was a that was a fun day. Or oh man, th this title here, I was looking for that forever. I remember when I was so happy when I found that. I'll just I'll get so happy just walking down here, walking amongst my collection can definitely put me in a good mood. And I just wanted to, like I said, document this so years later I can watch this video back and remember the fun times I had in my old. Pennsylvania library before it all moved to to Florida in my new Florida library, which um, is going to be it's going to be insane. I do have a little bit more room to work with in Florida, which is going to be nice. The uh, the library will actually, I believe, be a little bit larger, so that's good. Ceilings will be a little bit taller as well, so in theory, I'll actually have more room for for even more stuff in uh, in Florida. Again, in theory, we'll we'll see how that works out in reality once I move everything down there. But all right, guys, so I think that's going to do it. Pretty sure I said everything I wanted to, wanted, wanted to say. Pretty sure I showed you guys everything I wanted to show you, but I'm sure I did forget 
some things. I'm sure I left some stuff out. So if you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments down below. Leave a comment asking whatever questions you may be wondering, because I'm sure I did forget to tell you guys some things, or I'm sure I left some stuff out that you guys may be wondering about. So by all means, leave a comment. I love answering your comments, especially when it comes to comments about my my movie collection. So like I said, leave the comments down below. I want to hear from you guys and I want to answer your questions to the best of my my abilities. But all right, guys, I'm going to let you go. So as always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check down below for links to Patreon. If you guys do become a Patreon, I will send you a postcard every single month from the road. Also check down below for a link to Spreadshirt where you can grab yourself retro, rest stop t-shirts, proceeds, both from Spreadshirt and from Patreon do help support the show. And they keep the show going. So I really do appreciate the support, guys. It means a lot to me. I've got a lot of gas to be putting into Vanabelle to move down to uh, to Florida. So I really do appreciate the help. And man, getting all this stuff down there. It's going to be insane, but it's going to happen. And it may be a few short months from now, maybe a year from now. Not Hopefully, hopefully by the end of next year, I'll be giving you guys a brand new tour of my brand new library in florida that's the um that's the plan but all right guys i got packing the news so like i said thanks for watching hit the like button hit the subscribe button and if you guys watch this video all the way to the very end hashtag oh, hashtag good luck on the move there you go hashtag good luck on the move if you guys watch this video all the way until the very end and like i said hit the like button hit the subscribe button and if you guys do hit that subscribe button or you are subscribed and I will see you guys in the next video. One more quick shot here of the entire library, all the different rows. All right, guys. So like I said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. <sighs> bittersweet. That's what it is. Packing this all up is going to be bittersweet. All right. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.